When you look at society, you see that there are lots of representations of autism that are out there, uh, such as in books, stage plays, films, and they're a good thing because they put autism on the map. But it can be hard for any one representation to capture the diversity of autism. For example, Benedict Cumberbatch, I love him as an actor, but he's often cast in roles where he has to play someone who's very intelligent. He doesn't just portray them as intelligent, he portrays them as socially inept. Even though the word autism or Asperger's isn't used, it's kind of a good example of how there's this implicit representation going on of the genius who has no social skills. One of the great things about doing this exhibition is that it's actually a form of intervention in itself. It's one which targets society. Autism encompasses so much breadth in terms of the diversity of people, behaviours and abilities it covers, but also depth in terms of the complexity of challenges faced in everyday life. My research has been working with a charity that's based in Hull called Matthews Hub and I've been looking at different ways in which the social environment, the cultural environment, either limits or extends possibilities for social interaction. We live in a world which has very, very tight expectations of social coordination. You know, if you say the wrong thing at the wrong time, laugh inappropriately, give the wrong look, it means something significant and that's a very challenging world for people with Asperger's. You see that the environment and the culture is actually quite disabling. I was working with Lydia Meredith who's a very talented portrait photographer. We initially had the idea that we wanted to focus as close as possible to, to the subject. You can't just stand around being silent doing photography because that's a very strange alienating experience. So for example, when we were trying to photograph Campbell, we were photographing him in his garden and he was really excited to do photographs, but you could tell that when he was smiling there was, there was a hint of anxiety there. Um, we then tried a photograph where he was inside the house and we were outside and we photographed him through the window. And he, he just relaxed that little bit more and you can kind of see it in the picture. The video is based on my direct experience of walking with Campbell. It's only a hundred yard segment of his walk and in that time two things happen. One is that he stops walking and the other one is that he starts jogging. And I asked the question of the viewer, why did these two things happen? And then we watch the video again and this time I highlight all of the hazards that I know of that would have contributed to his anxieties. When we did the photography, I interviewed the participants and I already had a range of different questions to ask both parents and carers and autistic people. Rob, Robbie and people like Robbie prove that actually, yes, there's a different way of thinking and feeling about the world, but they're still thinking and feeling about the world. They're not closed off from it. They're not different from it. They're part of it. And actually, they're contributing to it a great deal. The autistic community are can be very passionate about the language used and so to suffer from autism implies that you know, it's a bad thing, it's broken, your disease and things like this. They're not productive ways forward in my personal mind. By creating installations which distort your sensory environment, whether it's auditory, so the boxes distort your auditory field, lessening human voices but amplifying more percussive distant sounds, um, or the mirrors, Lola's world, provide you with a fragmented view, making you focus on details of your environment rather than the whole picture. These are different ways of sort of showing that um, there are different ways of experiencing the world. Kane is one of the members of Matthew's Hub. He's very articulate. I know that he did a radio program once and someone called up to say that they didn't think he sounded autistic. And I think that kind of shows you why there's such a need to improve public understanding of autism. I think autistic people have a skill in social adaptability. Because they're not so tightly coordinated with their social and cultural meaning behind communication, they're actually able to move quite quickly on from awkward situations. When you think about the different ways in which society is prejudiced and categorizes people into particular roles and groups, I think society has something to learn, something social to learn from autistic people.